Hello, Ryan here, and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday. This is a weekly show which covers all of the news from the week just past. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get on with it. This week, Inside Star Citizen checks out what is coming in Alpha 3.17.2. Star Citizen Live delves deep into the upcoming plans for all things audio. Plus, the latest patch finally moves to Wave 1. So this week's Inside Star Citizen was talking all about what is coming in Alpha 3.17.2. Up first, our new variants of the RRS Heavy Armors with Camo, Arctic and Radiation Resistant Fallout variant. Looking very snazzy. I think these are all lootable, by the way. Uh, plus this Grey Cat Salvage Backpack, which is not usable technically in 3.18, but is still findable and wearable. And also in the upcoming months for subscribers, we will be getting this vintage spacesuit to commemorate RSI's first spaceship, the RSI Zeus. Love the look of all of these, especially this vintage suit. That is going to be pride and place in my hangar or my hab one day, I'm sure. Uh, for Microtech and Arcorp, we got more space stations. They're now added. Grimhex has more medical rooms to help speed up getting regenerated there. And rest stops now have hangars for ships, which I will say feel so much better coming in and landing compared to the pads. Much safer as well. Now on planet surfaces, we have the beginning of the derelict outpost rollout, starting with, I believe, five of these outposts on Microtech, with more, they say, being added in subsequent patches. These locations will contain enemy AI, loot, and lots of missions attached, plus reinforcements. For 317.2, it also brings with it many improvements and refinements to available missions, like the combat assist beacon system, plus more delivery missions for those on the shadier side of the law. There is also a new crashed reclaimer derelict settlement, which comes with many mission variants like exploring, bounty hunting, attacking, and defending. A shame it's not a passive settlement where you can go and walk around and see all the NPCs there. It is a kind of a criminal nest, it looks like the Nine Tails but still a very cool location. And a lot of this is all made possible thanks to the new planetary navigation mesh, which is a major milestone for Star Citizen, allowing mission designers to now begin adding NPC life to all areas of the verse. There is also a host of new mission content linked to space-based reclaimer derelicts. Not sure exactly what all of this will involve, but it'll be fun trying them out. And finally, the Siege of Orison dynamic event. Talking of which, we heard a little bit more about this event, and it is, as they say, an event like no other so far, requiring players to really prepare and get the right equipment, otherwise you will not get out alive. Now, on the platforms themselves, they say they have a device called Iffy, which is Identify Friend and Foe Inverter, which turns the platform's defense turrets onto the side of the Nine Tails, meaning that you won't be able to simply fly your ship in there and land, whether it's going to be possible, I don't know. It'll be worth a shot, I'm sure. Uh, but the platforms themselves are huge. And because of this, they have provided maps dotted around to help players navigate with a you are here kind of location, plus signage to let players know where each shuttle takes you to and from. Now, these shuttles work more like elevators, allowing players to call them when needed and then transport you to where you want them to go. Not all the platforms, though, are accessible via shuttles, so there are toys, as the designer puts it, to allow players to make their own way. There are also locked containers found throughout the level, each requiring a key code to be found to unlock them, and these will contain a multitude of surprises. There is also a secret maze, apparently, with the developer hinting that you cannot jump too far when you're wearing heavy armor. So it does sound like in order to fully navigate this maze, don't wear heavy armor because you won't be able to make certain jumps. Uh, they do suggest looting enemies as the event will last quite a while and you will likely run out of ammo and gear. Also, something I'm very happy about is they say this is not a hand-holding event. There are lots of optional objectives that the players will need to figure out for themselves and I am personally so very excited to check this event out. Far more now than I was before when I first heard about it. I thought it would be interesting. I'll give it a go. But now it seems like there is a lot more going on with it. Where planning and working together is going to be imperative. Not just with your friends and a group that you join with. But if you get there and there are other players there. You can coordinate and work together and try and figure things out. 
really excited to get on with this, getting planned and prepared with the org. Hopefully I'll find some time to jump in and play it and hopefully get it recorded as well. But this is looking like a great interim patch. Cannot wait to get involved. No idea when it's dropping. Hopefully we're only talking this next week. Uh, but anyway, let us move on. So this week's Star Citizen Live was with members of the audio team answering our questions. A lot of this stuff we already know about, but there are always new backers who don't know. Plus, it is often nice to hear that the plan has not changed and also where they are with certain features. So with that said, the first question is, how is the new Claudius audio system coming along? This we first heard about during CitizenCon last year, and it will replace the systems for all of the audio in the game. That will basically reshape everything audio related in Star Citizen, allowing all the other developers to use it and get to grips with it for whatever they need. Now, they say they have been progressing well with Claudius. One feature they really want for Claudius is that every feature in Star Citizen is to be systemic, which means they have to implement every single bit of audio into the Claudius system. Now, they are making great progress and expect it to be a few months yet until they can release something with Claudius active. But longer term is to have, as they say, everything driven by this system, and they will certainly talk about it again when it is ready. But they do say it will be a real revolution for Star Citizen's sound designers. So again, it is just making the process easier and quicker and more robust for everything audio rather than how it is now, which a lot of bugs and issues keep cropping up. Next question, will we get sonic booms? They say there's no reason why they can't allow sonic booms to play at the correct speeds, depending on atmospheric pressure. So yes, is there plans to improve directional sound effects to better aid in combat? And they say when they have the fully working audio propagation system, they will look more into how to provide better directional audio when inside a ship. And I do think it will be very interesting to hear just around the ship down a corridor, like a booming sound when something hits the hull, rather than it being the sound of a shot or whatever from outside. It'll really create a nice amount of ambience there. The next question is, are there plans for players to immediately hear when they are entering a room with a difference between sounds and atmospheric propagation through a suit? Now, they say they still need a couple of audio aspects to be completed before they can do this completely, but currently the audio system does support the pressure within any space, and it does change, as you can hear when you go through airlocks, but there is still a lot of work needed to be done for the room system as well before audio can truly support the transfer of pressure and other systems inside that room. They are progressing well with the room system. It has been one of those ongoing things for a long while now. So when we do finally see it, I'm sure it will be pretty impressive. Next question, are there plans to support surround sound? And they say surround sound is fully supported right now, but they will clearly need to investigate why people are not hearing this and they will treat this as a critical issue as well, which is excellent. Next question is, how are the new offices coming along for audio? And they say that each working space in the new office will be set up as 5.1, with the new flagship space being set up for 7.1 Dolby Atmos so that they can do proper mixing inside. Next question, will we ever have an in-game radio? Now, there are many ways they say that they could do this, be that licensing real songs that can play in-game or contracting an original 30th century song to be written and recorded, or even the ability for players to broadcast their own radio. Each option does carry a lot of legalities and issues with that that will need to be worked out and decided on. And they are expecting to have their own in-fiction music in-game and have in-fiction artists or higher bands to play as artists. They did say something will come from this. Too many developers at CIG want something to happen. It is just too early to commit to what will happen yet. Personally speaking, I would like to see bands, real life bands hired to make music. Like Gutterwash, for example, is a, an in-law band and other band, there are other bands in game as well. I can't remember the names, uh, but to have official soundtracks, but also allow backers to submit their own music. There are a lot of very talented musicians in the community and having them capable of submitting their own songs, being broadcasted across the verse, for the verse to hear and you can tune in on, that would be so good. There is a lot of potential here, and I really look forward to seeing what route they take. But again, as they say, it's just too early to commit right now. Next question, is there a limit on how far we can hear sound effects? Now, they do try to scale sound on real life values. Every sound does have attenuation, which determines how far that sound can travel. 
and they do plan to allow for more situational distance sounds. Uh, and Claudius will certainly help here. I think one of the issues we see with the current audio system is it's very buggy and not very intuitive to use or easy to catch problems, whereas Claudius will just make everything so much simpler. Will ships have a PA system? And yes, they really want to do this, and they have made progress on this. They have already been working with sound sources and speakers for a while, which have been used in the Siege of Orison. They also used it, I think, on board the Javelin when you do the, the tour. Uh, but the next step, they say, is to take this to a ship and start with a prototype. So starting with ship warnings, like maybe self-destruction audio. Currently, that only plays to the pilot, having that play out through the speakers throughout the ship. After that, they want to get to the ability for a player to speak into a PA system, say, on the bridge and broadcast his voice or their voice to individual rooms. And I, it's something that I'm certainly really excited for, being able to be on the bridge, uh, seeing an issue pop up on your MFD, on your screen, and then contact engineering via a PA system and ask them what's going on. Really excited for that system, but it does sound like there's a long way to go to get to that. Next question is, can we have more control over our audio so that we are all at decent volumes and so forth? So they say it is something they would like to do, allowing players to monitor their own vo uh, volumes and so on. But they do need UI to come up with a player facing screen so that we can do it. And I'm sure UI have many more important things going on right now. Next question, will there be voice filters or modules? And they say, yes, they already do this for NPCs broadcasting. So it is something that they have, but they just need to make it open to the players, which would be very cool. Uh, In-game voice has several bugs that have persisted for years. Is there any hope? And they say the big issue with the VoIP is the amount of testing time required to reproduce these issues. They are always working on it, and they really want it to be 100% reliable, of course, and as good as it can be, better than any VoIP out there. Uh, but over time, they will get to all the issues. It's just a matter of time and resources. Next question, are there any plans for more NPC background chatter? Now, they did say that the cargo and refinery decks were used to create better Walla or background sounds, as it's kind of known. They are now going back over older locations like Lawville and so on to get them sounding more lifelike. And for the future, they would certainly like more of a dynamic Walla system. So having it sound populated based on the actual amount of people talking. Now, they do say they're at the point now where they will begin working this out. They partly still need to determine what software to use. They are looking at maybe using text-to-speech, which will help to bolster all the recordings they have and all the scripture they have already without having to go back and record a load of new things. Some, this actually harks back to something that one of the narrative... I think it was Dave from the narrative team spoke about. Having text-to-speech options in-game will allow us to, on, while we're traveling around in a quantum jump or whatever, listen to many of the official short stories or lore posts while we travel around. Hopefully that's not too far off because I think that would be excellent, being able to sit on a long journey and just listen to the short stories that are already out there. Now, next question, are there plans for AI-generated voices? And they are looking at the option for this, but they also want to have curated voice actors to actually voice their characters, so maybe a mixture of the two, but they want the quality of having a real-life person who is trained in this. Next question, will they be bringing back Tessa Bannister, who is a character from the two-point-something days? Uh, the actor who plays this role, they say, will certainly come back again. They do love working with her. And I think it was mentioned a little while back that they really want to give us something substantial, a, a, a role that is substantial to her without it just being simply bringing her back for the sake of it. Next question. Are there plans to make components sound off when damaged for engineers to know by sound what is damaged? And they say, yes, it is something that would be fairly simple to do. Uh, but again, it's time and resources. Now, I really like the sound of this. Being able to hear a sound and then over time, as you get better at engineering, you may be able to pick up that whether that particular power plant or shield generator is faulty just based on the sound and what condition it might be in or what the problem might be. That would be so great for just tying the engineering profession to be even more skill-based. So very happy to hear it's simple, but of course, there's no time dates on this. Next question, will spacesuits or ship sounds stop if you get EMP'd? Now this, they say, is more of a question for gameplay, but from an audio standpoint, they will offer the tech to allow this. Now it was mentioned a while ago, to get around the whole why we hear sound in space issue, we will have an audio component that will simulate the sound in space. 
and if that component gets damaged, then external sounds will stop being generated, and all you'll hear is the physical booms and bangs in the ship. Now, I really love this idea. Very excited to see this come along because it just creates that sense of eeriness and atmosphere, and if you lose your sound component and you don't have one to replace it, it is going to make things a lot more challenging. Next question, could we have the option to turn off audio simulation? And they say, yes, this would be cool. I suppose this hacks back to the last question. If it is a physical component that can be EMP'd, then you should be able to toggle it on and off. Next question, how come several soundscapes are now gone? For example, the Area 18 tram sounds. And they say this is probably a bug and they will look into it. There is a big push internally for automatic testing. So these issues should be getting picked up before releasing. Next question, why are shutdown sounds so different to the engine sounds? Now, they are planning to tie the startup and shutdown sounds to the engine and to the components. But again, time and resources, much of this tech they are working on will make this easier. Speaking about Claudius, of course. Next question, will doors block sound? And they say, yes, this will be done via the audio propagation system, which has been in the works for a long time now. And they have working demos internally, and it does respect when a door is open or closed angles and how sound travels down corridors and where the sound propagates from. I am so excited to hear this in action. Imagine being on board one of these derelict reclaimers and as you're walking through it, you're hearing the sounds of maybe a creature traveling from one of the rooms or one of the other sides of the ship. Can't wait for that moment. And of course, as we know, this has been in the works for a long time. So fingers crossed, it is going to be a very complete and robust system when it does come along. Next question, are there plans for new ship computer voices and sounds? And they say, yes, the text to speech tech will be a big part of this. And they do plan to completely overhaul all the ship voices and sounds. They're also wanting to improve its role and unifying the ship warnings to create a realistic experience, as there is a lot of science involved with ship audio or, or vehicle audio. Also getting better ship computers that encapsulate the manufacturer and the role of the ship as well as maybe looking into having ship computers that are more orientated to certain gameplay loops. For example, one that helps with exploration or for salvaging and so on, providing more context based on what you are doing. Also, upgrade options for different voice options would be very nice. Uh, a lot of passion from this team, I will say, which is great to hear. They really want to get a lot of this stuff going, but I guess they just need to work on the foundational systems which will then allow them to explore these other avenues and fix what we currently have and make it easier for everybody in the team to develop better sounds. So a lot of passion, but a bit of time to get there, but it will be worth it in the end, in my opinion. Next question, voice control, like voice attack. Is this going to be an option in game? And they say they do want to create their own versions of voice control. You can use voice attack. HCS do a lot of voice packs as well with famous people, but they would like to do their own. And they would also like to go one step further and have their own voice interacting with NPCs. So saying hello to an NPC and having that NPC respond to you or maybe read out one of the optional dialogue choices and having them respond appropriately. Now, funnily enough, I was only thinking about this the other day, how we will interact with NPCs in a multiplayer environment. Having one member of the group pressing the dialogue choices means that the rest could miss out on what is being asked if not dictated. So having a way for players to literally verbally talk to an NPC and have them respond appropriately is something that I think would really make this game something even more special than what it is. So I hope CIG find a way to utilize this one day. Really love this idea. And as I say, I was literally just thinking about this maybe two or three days ago. Next question is, is binaural audio being considered? And they have tried this internally, but not settled on what they want for Star Citizen. Once they have done some solid surround work, they will then be able to figure out what they need. Question after this is, will there be klaxons and alarms when a ship gets damaged? And they say yes, for sure, but they don't want it to become really annoying. Will there be large echoes in large ship interiors? And they say yes, they really want a better audio reflection system and are actively researching options. And then the final question is, will we ever have a honk or a horn on our spaceships? And they simply say yes. So there you go. That is Star Citizen Live's audio team Q&A. Some really nice elaborations on what they are working on and what they want to work on. Very excited for a lot of this tech, like the Claudius system, the propagation system. And if they can get us being capable of 
talking to an NPC and having the NPC talk back, man, we're in for a, quite a ride. Inside Star Citizen, Jared says, will return on July 28th, as it is now on its three-week hiatus. But that was Star Citizen Live. Let us move on. So also this week, the Galactopedia was updated with some great articles featuring systems like Goss and Hadrian, plus a lot of the plant life found throughout the verse, specifically those found at New Babbage. CIG are running both Ninetales Lockdown and Jumptown 2.0 dynamic events over the weekend, likely using this time to gather more data in prep for 317.2's Siege of Orison event. And don't worry about the wipe for all of those who take part in these events, CIG do plan to compensate you with Alpha UEC. Finally, Alpha 317.2 has now gone to Wave 1 on the PTU. This now includes concierge and subscribers, but that all-important NDA is now lifted. So for my streams next week, I will be checking out all of the features, so be sure to tune in. It won't be too long now until it makes its way through to the rest of the testing waves and onto live, but I can say the player-to-player -player desync at this time looks horrendous with players literally jerking around all over the space or just sliding everywhere. CIG will be aware of it and they will be working to dial it in, of course, as on-foot desync is one of the focus parts of this patch. So that brings us to the end of the show. If you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Also, I am able to do this thanks to my very generous patrons and channel members. If you appreciate what I do and would like to help make it even better from as little as $1 a month, all of the links are provided below.